a lot of people do things backwards when they're buying a house. Okay. They'll start with uh, the real estate agent and they start looking for the house first. And they find the house that they love mm -hmm. and then they realize they need to get financing. Oh. By the time they make an offer and they get financing, the house is gone. Nice to meet you again at the Kicks. Yeah, it's a pretty Stop. awesome uh, event that you guys are having here. We cannot talk about real estate without the fun, fun financing part. Mm -hmm. For many people, that is the challenging aspect and element. You could have the right eye for the right property, but you have to navigate the... Uh, you have to put in the juice. What would you advise uh, a small business owner? What is the, the, the recommended strategy uh, for them to get into a space of, let's say, residential real estate? The best thing to do is to get talk to a lender first. Okay. You need to get pre-approved. And the pre-approval process doesn't take very long. You just need the last two years of your work history. Um, and we need your credit. We need to show that you have money in the bank and how much you have. And then we can determine what you can buy. And we give you a pre-approval based off of that. And then, and only then, can you actually make an offer. For self-employed people like you're talking about, it gets a little bit more intricate. Uh, a W-2 employee is very straightforward. I get paid a salary of $60,000. You divide that by 12, that's, mm -hmm. your, uh, that's your monthly income. Mm -hmm. For a self-employed uh, person, they could be making a million dollars a year gross, but that's not the number that the bank uses. You have deductions, you have a lot of things that you write off. Mm -hmm. And then when you write all these things off, you may not qualify for as much as you wanted, or you might. So it's important, especially if you're self-employed, there's a two-year period that you should be self-employed to qualify for the best type of terms. And that's where the mortgage guy comes in. And that's the first step. We review the last two years of your tax returns and your income. That's the beginning. And then we determine the rest. All right. All right. Yeah, I think that's very helpful, especially... Uh, there's the, the, the aspect you talk about of your, your income history, the work history. So a lot of work has to go into that element. Now, for this small business owner, um, you said even if you're earning a million dollars gross uh, without necessarily uh, being able to delve into the, what, what would you call it, the, the intricates of uh, uh, the, the finance structuring, Mm -hmm. The finance structuring of of one who's earning, let's say, I'm earning two million dollars. You get and uh, put it in. Well, yeah, it could be gross. And and you spoke about write-offs because you see, for you now, it's it's easy. But for someone out there, there is a lot of information that is is seeping through. And uh, it's it's that aspect of okay, uh, the writing off, the writing off. You're writing off. So you, you're earning the money, but the bank is going to look at what you're earning. And, and your say, expenses. And your expenses. Oh, so basically you're talking about the game of ex, not just gross, but the income expense game has to, to be right and, you know, deliberate if I, I, I want to attain a property as a property owner. Right. And uh, for, self, for, for first time buyers in particular yeah. who've never yeah. gone through the process before, yeah. they may not know that. They say it's, it's, it's incredible that mm -hmm. I get those uh, conversations where the customer will say to me, um, but I made so much money on my tax returns. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, uh, you did. Your business looks like it's doing amazing, mm -hmm. uh, but your, your net income, you have a lot of expenses that you're writing off. It doesn't buy you as mm -hmm. much as you would think that it does. Um, but there are creative ways to uh, help that income because there's a lot of write-offs and a lot of business owners may not know this. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of write-offs that uh, you can add back in. There are depreciate, there's depreciation. Mm -hmm. uh, that's really not an expense that comes out of your pocket. And because it's not an expense that comes out of your pocket, you can add that to the income. Some mm -hmm. people have depreciation of twenty, thirty thousand dollars sometimes more. Uh, when you use your home as a business, mm -hmm. people mm -hmm. write off your home expenses. And those are also something that we can add back. So it's important to work with uh, somebody uh, who works with self-employed people, especially a lender that, you know, is qualified and knows that type of business. Oh, thank you. I think that's very, those are very uh, helpful tips uh, 
to give uh, in regard to this. I appreciate that. I think for the small business owner, that's uh, very helpful information because in, mm. in our community, uh, we have a lot of, a lot of those. But um, look at the individual uh, who has, let's say I have my $2 million and I want to buy cash. I'm self-employed. Mm -hmm. What do you advise me? And I'm looking to buy a property of, let's say, okay, 1.2 million. I have the cash, but I'm being strategic about my entry. Mm -hmm. So this needs to also be a conversation with your accountant mm -hmm. to ensure that what you borrow is basically no more than you really need to borrow mm -hmm. uh, and no less either because you want to maximize how much you're borrowing. And it does matter uh, when it comes to your taxes on what you decide to do. The cost of lending mm. is relatively low from a rate perspective. Mm. And that happens often where I do have people who have millions and millions of dollars mm -hmm. and they will not buy cash. They want to free that money so that they can put it into other investments. Okay. Something that yields them something else, maybe another business. Or what's the best investment in, uh, that, you, that a person can make? Mm. In my opinion, the best investment is in yourself. Okay. In your business, mm -hmm. in your hands, yeah. that's where you want your money to be. So financing your home and paying 6% interest, the other money that you didn't put into the house, you can use that to grow your business to 20% more, 30% more, 40% more. That's where the money, I believe, should go. But that's, that's my opinion. Um, so for, for somebody who has that kind of cash, I usually see them financing more than you would expect. Mm, mm. And you say, why, why is he financing? He has so much money. So that he can free up that money to do other things. All right. I uh, thank you very much. Yeah. I appreciate it. Uh, thank you for your time. And uh, we look forward to having you once again. At, oh, at, I, at I, I, I would be honored. I would be honored. Yes. You guys did an amazing job.